This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create this time eroded metal text using two textured backgrounds I provided, as well as how to quickly change the text without having to redo the effects. You can find the links to them in my video's description or project files. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, smash that subscribe button and please remember to click like if you like this video. Thank you. This dirty rusted metal texture will fill our text and this broken concrete wall we'll use for the background. First, we'll change the color of the wall. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Check Colorize, and for the hue, type in 31, and for the saturation, type in 29. Open the Adjustments panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Adjustments. Click the Levels icon, and for the input black level, type in 130, and for the output white level, type in 90. Open your Elliptical Marquee tool, and drag a selection from just inside the upper left corner to just inside the lower right corner. Go to Select and Transform Selection. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height. This links them together. In either field, type in 90%. Then press Enter or Return twice. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather it 300 pixels. We'll fill it with black, but before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since black is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the selection with a foreground color. Notice our layer mask now has a soft black elliptical shape at its center. Think of layer masks as stencils. White reveals and black conceals. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Double click the layer mask and for its density type in 90%. This makes the black shape in our layer mask a bit more transparent which essentially makes that area look a bit darker. To consolidate space in our layers panel let's place all the background layers into a folder. To do this Unlock the background and shift click the top adjustment layer to make all the layers active. Press Ctrl or Command G. Let's name it Background. Open your horizontal type tool. We want our text to be white so we can see it easily over our background. To do this, we'll press X on our keyboard to invert our foreground and background colors. Open the type picker and pick a font. Heavier fonts look best for this effect. I'll make the size 370 points, but feel free to adjust its size based on the font you choose and the amount of characters in your text. Make the aliasing smooth, and I'll make the alignment centered. Type out your text. To reposition it, open your Move tool and move it. To adjust the amount of space between your lines of text, Press T to open back your Type tool and double click the large T on the text layer to highlight all of your text. Click the Character Panel icon or go to Window and Character. Place your cursor over the Letting icon and click and drag the scrubby slider to the left or right. To adjust the space between two characters, click between those characters and press Alt or Option and the left or right arrow keys on your keyboard. When you're done, you can close the character panel. Open your Move tool and open the rust and dirt texture I provided. We'll place it onto the concrete background by pressing Ctrl or Command A to select the entire document and Ctrl or Command C to copy it. Open back the concrete background and press Ctrl or Command V to paste it. We'll clip it to our text by hovering our cursor between the two layers and pressing and holding Alt or Option. When we see this icon, click it, which makes the texture into a clipping mask. We can also go to Layer and create clipping mask. 
We'll convert the text layer into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively and allow us to ultimately replace it with different text if we want without having to redo the effects. To do this, make the text layer active and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Double-click an empty area of the text layer to open its layer style window. Click Bevel and Emboss. The style is Outer Bevel, the technique is Chisel Hard, and the depth is 370%. The direction is Up, the size is 20 pixels, and the soften is 0. Uncheck Global Light. The angle is 120 degrees, and the altitude is 30 degrees. Open the Gloss Contour Presets, and click the Gear icon. Click Small List, and click Ring Double. The Highlight Mode is Color Dodge. Click the Color Box, and in the Hexadecimal field, type in F, F, 9, A, 0, 0. Then click OK. The opacity is 69%. The shadow mode is multiply. For its color, type in 8, 3, 3, 4, 1, E. The opacity is 100%. Click Contour. Open the presets and pick Steep Slope Rolling. The range is 70%. Range determines the overall coverage of the bevel itself. Click Inner Glow. The Blend Mode is Linear Burn, the Opacity is 30%, and the Noise is 0. For its color, type in 390C01. The Technique is Softer, the Source is Edge, the Choke is 0, and the Size is 30 pixels. The contour is linear, and the range is 50%. Click Outer Glow. The Blend Mode is Color Burn, the Opacity is 20%, and the Noise is 0. The color is black, the technique is softer, the spread is 0, and the size is 100 pixels. Click Drop Shadow. The Blend Mode is Multiply, the color is black, the opacity is 40%, and the angle is 126 degrees. The distance is 59 pixels, the spread is 0, and the size is 18 pixels. Next, we'll brighten it a bit. Make the top layer active, and click the Adjustment Layer icon. Click Curves. The Curves panel shows our image's tonal range from its darkest to its lightest values. For our image, drag the upper right point straight down to approximately here. Go to the middle of the diagonal line and drag the line straight up to approximately here. Go to this point on the graph and drag it down to here. Next, we'll add a light source. Make a new layer. Open your pen tool. And at the top, choose Path. Place your pen tool here, click, and release. Continue to click and release as you make paths that approximate mine. Click back on the first point to close the path. Right click or secondary click directly on the path to open the flyout list and click Make Selection. Feather it 200 pixels. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. We'll fill it with black, and since our background color is black, press Ctrl or Command plus Delete. Then deselect it. Reduce its opacity to 60%. Next, I'll show you how to quickly replace your existing text with different text. Make your text layer active and double click it to open its source. First, Let's reduce its size so when we type out our new text, we know there'll be enough room. Open your Transform tool, go to a corner, and drag it in. Double-click the large T of the layer to highlight your text. 
Click this icon to invert your foreground and background colors. It'll be easier to see our text if it's black when we type it out. Type out your new text and adjust its spacing. Open your Move tool and center it. Close the Smart Object and when you see this message, click Yes to save the changes. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.